welcome to this what is it it's a it's an interview it's a police style grilling fbi style uh, interrogation oh, yes. of cia cia style interrogation of the it's, it's a conspiracy <laughs> theory on top of a conspiracy theory on top of Abs- one, on top absolutely. of a psyop on yeah, top of, on top my of an, ancient, folks. an ancient alien infiltration yep yep sounds about right it sounds about the direction that this is an armanian go. luciferic uh hyper draconian matrixes infiltration yep right on the money straight people. away we're getting straight into it i love it i love it beautiful well if my camera okay good my camera is focusing eventually it's because it's kind of dark and rainy here so it's, it's not much light anyway i can't even see you julian what it just shows your profile picture you oh, look like a so blunt weird. or something i don't know do you have a blunt right. or what do you have in your in your teeth i'm eating a herb from the uh, garden i can't remember what it was probably some yeah i've got absolutely no idea can you see me now okay. yes yes okay beautiful all right let's start from here action <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, Hello, God's favorites. Welcome to this uh, CIA style interrogation of Olympus Astrology by Colin Bowles of God as his Gmail. Um, oh, no. No, Lou Gall. <laughs> Let's start all over. I want you refer to me as, as Lou Gall if you can. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm ch- I changed my YouTube name. I'm changing everything to Lou Gall. Oh, right. Yes, yeah, sweet. Great. Okay. All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> Get it back in character. I was watching the documentary about Sylvester Stallone yesterday. It was fucking awesome. Anyway, um, so welcome everybody to this CIA FBI style interrogation by by this fairy Lugal, who just waved <laughs> as I said interrogation. <laughs> that really set the mood, didn't it? <laughs> Um, it's also a psyop, everyone. Yes, and a draconian invasion. Is that correct? From a higher yeah, dimension. It's a draconian yep. ancient alien invasion, of course. Yeah. Armanian yep. luciferic invasion. Exactly. And I'm going to have to try and resist this uh, these negative <laughs> forces from <the> subterranean depths. <laughs> Don't be hating on the underworld creatures. Mm-hmm. They're just they're just uh, moseying around, <laughs> digging up ore. Obsidian ore, you know. <laughs> Did she go ore? Yeah, well, hey, that's not entirely wrong, is it? Mm. Beautiful. So, yeah, anyway, that's what we're doing in this little video, and um, I'll be grilling Colin next week. So get ready for that. So, my so, friend, this is spontaneous, so Julian, right? You're just coming up with this on the spot. I, I know everyone here wants to hear your magical story, your adventure of adventures. Of your life, <laughs> especially especially referencing what what is the drama playing out from your astrology? Who are mm. you and what are you doing here? Who I is this, love who's this Julian you speak of? We yes. have to, we have to know. I love that topic actually. So this is really really cool. I can just show you my chart and we can tell the story with the chart, right? <clears throat> well, let's do it. Because you know that's what this astrology is about. It's your life purpose. And your story. Like you said, I loved what you said a couple months ago or something. You said that it's like this the chart is the way I do the chart is it shows someone's story and it gives meaning to, to life, whatever that meaning is, you know, whatever that life is. And um, so let's give an example by looking at my chart. <clears throat> oh, so we've got a real interesting and clear story and purpose here. So here we go. This is, can you see that? This is my chart. All right. So it gets fun. So the drama in this chart is around love and family. Um, with Venus in the 12th house and the moon in the sixth. And then this big cross with Jupiter up here, Mars down here, and then Venus and the moon in opposition. So this big square, grand square here. <clears throat> which is an interesting this is so this is all about family and love basically 
complications with family and love. The rest of the chart is basically just about success and spirituality and spirituality. There's uh, it's a kind of in some ways a little bit of a boring chart in that sense. Uh, Regulus rising is fame and success. Hydra on the ascendant is astrology and Zosma is astrology. So we have here a very um, well-known astrologer. Jupiter and Saturn in a day chart on the MC in the ninth house. Um, this is also another marker of a successful astrologer. These planets in the ninth house make astrologers. And then on the MC makes um, high status and success. Saturn, on the other hand, up here as well, is good for the career, but also bad for the marriage and children. So there's, you can see the omens are mounting here that the family and love life will be complicated and the career life and the spiritual journey will be very rich and very um, profitable. Just you need an AI wife problem solved. There you go. <laughs> Just get us by a waifu and call it a day. AI children, they are so well behaved out here. AI children, Jesus Christ, I'd rather die. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're oh. hilarious. You are oh, hilarious. God. Mm -hmm. Oh my, they're going to live eternally, I'm pretty sure, right? So. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's terrible. Let's not get on that tangent. There's a lot to say. <laughs> and then the sun is here with Aldebaran, so another weight towards the uh, success and the fame, blah, blah, blah. Um, and it's in a parallel with Jupiter here, meaning that the sun is something like, what is it, like 17 degrees, no, 23 degrees, I think, from this. I can't remember. Three plus, 24, 24 degrees from the MC. And Jupiter is like 23 degrees from the MC. So then if you take the chart like a mirror, they're on top of each other. Anyway, all you need to know is it's another marker of bloody success. <laughs> um, it's to do with also having a, a very high spiritual position because it's all in the ninth house. Some very, you know, very well known because of spirituality. And what's the other thing? Also, that they will, their children will be very successful. So I'm not going to have very many children because of Saturn, most likely, and some other, you know, signifiers here. But the children I do have will be very, um, will be very positive for my life, basically. <laughs> and then there's Mercury here with the sun in this. Mercury appearing as an evening star in the horns of Taurus. I'm going through this very quickly because I don't want to waste too much time, but <clears throat> all this stuff in the horns of Taurus, this shows that my a lot of my spiritual work and advancement in this life is on the divine path of love or the path of divine love. So Aphrodite. And ever since I was like 14 or 15 years old, I have loved the goddess Aphrodite without knowing why and before knowing anything about my chart. And then now I load up my chart and I go, OK, this is very you know, significant. I'm meant to be connected with Aphrodite or Isis, the goddess of love in whatever tradition you're looking at, really. And then a, a year ago or something, I was told by a psychic that um, in one of my past lives, I had some she wasn't very clear about it, but I had some high position in the temples linked with Aphrodite or linked with Isis in Egypt. And looking at and I knew my chart by that point and I went, OK, that makes sense. That's the last confirmation that I need. You know, it's very interesting. So what can we say here with all this um, spiritual omens and then also this certain amount of bad luck <clears throat> when it comes to love? We can say that through his bad luck in love, he will draw closer to the goddess, <clears throat> to the divine love, instead of the human love. That's a very big theme of this chart, <clears throat> one way or another. 
The Venus Mars square is always to do with infidelity. So this is a primary story in my previous relationship. Yeah, well, I've had multiple previous relationships, but one of them, one of the major ones. Um, and that event happened in my life. This is a very advanced astrology now, but that event triggered in my life in 2000. And, what was it 2016? Pretty much exactly when this square of Venus and Mars became activated by a primary direction. So I can show you. Oh, look, and Aphrodite is my my desktop screen. But if I go, should be animation. Gosh, I forget. Mundo Laboratory it should be this one. Yep, here we go. So these are the primary directions. Very complicated. I'm not going to explain it here. Um, I can't remember which way if it was Venus to Mars, but we can look at those. No, it wouldn't be. Must be Mars to Venus. So there. So my Venus and Mars are in a in a square, quote unquote square, but it's not exact. And so what I'm doing here is I'm tracking. Um, the primary direction of these two planets, Venus and Mars, until that square becomes exact. And it becomes exact. From, yeah, look, there we go. Here's one of them in, there you go, May 24, 2016. Mars activates a square with my Venus. My Mars activates a square with my Venus. And this is, I think it was in... August of 2016 or maybe July, but very close around this period. This is when this big drama unfolded because Venus and Mars are the lovers. They are. Do you get, do you get many people coming to you asking, is he or she cheating? Is that pretty often? Actually, I don't. I, it usually just so comes funny. up. I usually just look at the chart and I'm like, well, look, let me tell you what this means. Yeah, everyone, if you're suspicious of your partner, get Julian to investigate. <laughs> well, it's more than it's... She cheating. <laughs> I know they're cheating. You're like, no, Julian's like, no, they're not. They're not cheating. I know they are. I know they are. <laughs> like, but it doesn't say it. Well, that's interesting. I've actually never been asked that question. <laughs> it's really interesting. I've never been asked that question. And... Um, I don't know if it's just a vibe that I give off that I don't want to be asked stupid questions or something, <laughs> but I've never been asked that question. And even though it's something that I usually just bring up with the person. So you can see with my chart, right, we've got Venus and Mars in a square here. There. So this, whenever Venus and Mars come together, it's love triangles. Always. Unless maybe, un ex maybe with the exception of the trine, but that's maybe. Usually, even with the trine, if Venus and Mars come together, there are love triangles. With the trine, there's just a lot less love triangles. <clears throat> but with the square, with the opposition, with the conjunction, always love triangles. And if the aspect is happening in, you know, if it's happening in angles, so the first house, the 10th house, the seventh house, and the fourth house, then it's usually the person themselves who is having an affair. But if they are having, happening in non angles, so for in my chart, it's in the 12th house and the second house, these are weak, very weak houses, it's happening to the person. Do you know what I want to do, Julian? What? I want to get this printed on a birthday cake and, and have you eat your own chart. <laughs> <laughs> How symbolic. A communion with my own chart. <laughs> oh, man. So I, do, I do want you to tell my uh, my subscribers, how did you get into astrology in the in the first place? Did you have like a an angel like throw a book at you or did you have a revelation? How did you stumble upon it in I the love, very beginning? I love that. Well, it kind of goes back to what I said in the chart, right? That everything in my chart revolves around love for better and for worse, spiritually for better and materially not so easy, right? But um, 
it really like my whole path in general started when I how old was I, I was 15 or something and I to, to cut a long story short I fell in love you know I met this I met this girl who I just thought she was absolutely the most incredible thing in the entire universe uh it was beyond words you know and it was like I I I something happened I saw her for the first time and it was like I saw God and suddenly it was just on the freeway you know since then um waking up and then having all these revelations and part of that journey was astrology and in the beginning when I you know my mom had a report done for me when I was born and so when I was waking up after this experience I was reading that report and wondering, you know, thinking about myself and thinking, does this make sense to me? And it was a modern astrology report. So it was all about my personality and, you know, being a Leo rising and a Gemini and a Capricorn and all these sorts of things. Um, so it was interesting to me at first, but something in my chest was like, this doesn't fulfill me. This doesn't give me the answers that I'm searching for. This doesn't fill um the the this doesn't agree with fully the knowledge the intuition that i have in my chest and in my stomach about what i'm here to do on this earth you know it should be like if if, if the science of the stars is real then it should be able to show us what is our destiny how what degree of call it success will we reach and um what is our purpose <clears throat> we should be able to see that from without knowing pretty much anything about the person. So I was very unsatisfied with that. And as a, and I noticed that the more I read, the more confused I became with the astrology. It didn't, it didn't reading more made things worse. So I put the astrology away for about five years or something. And I got into, um, you seem like into, an inquisitive child growing up. Yeah, I bet, definitely. I bet you you're 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 like why why are, why is this happening? Why is that happening? I'm wondering if when you were a child, what 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 kind of questions did you ask your parents? Oh well, yeah, you're exactly right. All kinds of that stuff. I remember I used to lie next to my mom and just ask her constant questions about. Um, I don't know. I had this one about how does electricity work, and she know she didn't know the answer. <laughs> And so we'd always talk about, you know, how we think electricity works. <laughs> and I was like eight or nine. I don't know why I remember that. But yeah, definitely. I read a lot and I asked a lot of questions. And I spent a lot of time with my dad, actually, who is very uh, intellectual, you know, very studious. And uh, to give you an idea, he's, he's a foreigner. He's from Finland, but his English wow. is better than my mom's, who's from Australia. So he's, he's... I, I think my I was going to say, I think my subscribers are all thinking the same thing. How do I raise a child exactly like you? So what what ingredients did your parents put in the uh, special sauce that created you? Do you think? Mm. Yeah, well, that's really interesting, right? They just let me they just let me go on my own path the whole time. There was no ever a sense of you can't do this. You can't do that. Or there wasn't even a sense of you shouldn't. There was no feeling of being confined or being restrained. It was just, you know, when I was in China, when I was 14 with my mom, she gave me a cigarette and she said, try, try this. And I said, no, that's disgusting. I don't want to smoke. <laughs> so it's this reverse sort of semi reverse psychology. But the most important thing is just not having judgment, not not enforcing anything. If you try and dominate another will, eventually that will will rise up and try to dominate you. Mm. So that I think that's the secret ingredient. But I'll, I'll continue with my story a little bit because I want to finish it because <clears throat> it was so I got into so I, you know, I got out of the normal astrology and then I got into Plato and the Neoplatonists and these ancient, the ancient mystery schools, the ancient religions, of course, part of which is to do with astrology or or in the beginning for me astro theology with of course the man with the legend santos Bonacci, and um 
And that was my segue into a much deeper view of astrology. And then I had a reading with Santos and that blew my mind because I didn't, I knew enough about astrology, <clears throat> but having that session with him and having him sort and of lay the Bulgarian? It, no, no, this is, um, he's actually an Australian, Australian guy who does astro theology. So looking at the, how astrology shows up in like the Bible, for example, and in all the different ancient books, the yeah, theology, the study of God in the stars, astro theology, rather than astrology, which is just studying um, the science of the stars, how it affects destiny. That's all astrology is. Astro theology is another step. Um, and I mean, he wasn't doing like, I mean, the, the astrology, he was just doing pretty, pretty basic kind of astrology reading, you know, but. Nevertheless, for me at the time, it was like, whoa, okay, this is really, really real. And I decided, all right, screw it. I'm going to study. And my mom, one of my mom's clients is an astrologer locally in our city. And so, and she ran some workshops. So I took some of my friends along and we, uh, you know, coughed up a bit of cash while we were in university and took some of her classes, obviously outside of university, the classes were happening. And, um, in that last year of uni, I studied astrology alongside my other courses. And then as university came to an end and I kind of realized I want to, I want to do something for myself. I, I didn't, I had no idea it was going to be astrology yet, but I just wanted to work for myself because I didn't like the idea of the man. And, um, and then I thought, well, what are, what are my skills? And I went, oh shit, I've learned astrology. And then as I made that decision, boom, then I met Ruman. And that's when the story really starts. Ruman is my official um, kingpin astrology teacher who does ancient astrology. And uh, he's the pretty much anybody, any astrologer who, who uh, is worth their salt has at some point learned from him. He's, he's right at the, the sort of pinnacle because he's been doing this for 45 years or something. So he's right up there. And um, and yeah, now here I am doing what I do, looking at the, you know, now I've, uh, I remember one of the books that I ordered from him, he wrote inside the cover, he said, um, may he be granted access to the sacred knowledge of Hermes Trismegistus. And I do believe that's what happened. I have to know what makes you the most frustrated in your life and what it makes you the opposite of frustrated. What makes you the most comfortable? And I'm talking about the most frustrating thing as a pattern mm -hmm. in your life. And I want to know the most comfortable thing possible. I'm so yeah. curious. So. Yeah, right. Honestly, I think the most comfortable thing is just running my business. <clears throat> That's easy. It's what allows me to, um, function and exist in this world i could not work a job i would probably die within a year of working a, a full-time job you know so it means you have a great relationship with your anima right that's interesting say more you, about that you must be like really diplomatic with her uh, mm -hmm. if anyone if the viewers didn't know julian is an infp and the infp the infp subconscious of the anima is the ESTJ personality, which is like the businessy validation, high metrics. Dari Nardi, Dari Nardi uh, neuroscientist says that the INFPs get the most kind of degrees and certifications. A lot of people will uh, fight their feminine or masculine side of the, which is the opposite of what they are, anima animus, to the death. But it, Julian saying that you know he his his business is where he's the most comfortable means that he has a very good relationship with his feminine side. And they're not warring against each other. And because this is the place of the person's biggest insecurity slash aspiration slash where they find the most meaning because it's the gatekeeper of the unconscious. So. Wow, that's cool to know. Yeah, that's really interesting. And I mean, there you go, right? The feminine polarity again, the divine mother. It all, all comes up in my chart. <laughs> What's her name? Did you name her? No, 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 I haven't. 
I think I had I had like a no, I don't think. Now that I'm thinking about it. Mine is Judith mm-hmm. A. Buchanan. I'm serious. I'm not even making that up. That's her literal name. Did that come to you in meditation or something? Oh no, when I was in the underworld, she was my she was the gate she was kind of the guide, like in Dante's Inferno. She was my she was my uh guide to the underworld. Mm. Fascinating. That's so may you may everyone in this um video and may you Julian get to get to know her personally because she will unlock every Mm -hmm. every piece of shadow contents inside of us Mm -hmm. you know when we get to to listen to them you know interesting yeah yeah wow 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 that's awesome i love that i love that and then next uh, time yeah Mm -hmm. well i'm just thinking about the thing that's most frustrating for me and i'm not like it's kind of stupid but the place where I find it the hardest to keep my cool is um, building, like construction, building things. Like you have <laughs> a Lego so stat stupid. or something? And then you like no, like, like, like manual labor, like manual uh, labor, okay. like sawing and screwing and drilling and uh, doing that sort of, you know, putting things together. And if something, you know, I mean, that's pretty natural, but. It's, I just noticed, it's like the one place where I just cannot keep my cool. If something goes wrong, I'm just like, fuck this. I'm done. Um, so you were a construction worker before you started astrology? <laughs> not really, no, not really. But my dad does a lot of woodworking. And so, you know, I've, I've got that sort of uh, bent. Yeah. We should, we should make a birdhouse together sometime. <laughs> just me screaming at you the whole time. Fuck, Colin, you're such an imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> um, it would be hilarious. But yeah, I mean, and that's kind of tame, right? It's a bit of a boring one, but that's the best I can come up with. Not much is really frustrating me. I'm in a pretty happy place in my life right now, as the charts agree, you know? I think that the next question our viewers are burning to know about is, what is your favorite comfort food or drink? <laughs> Comfort food or drink? That's actually a really good question because I've had like massive changes in my diet this year. So like I eat just so differently now. Um, oh, jeez. <laughs> yes, one branch of a one, yeah, one twig so, of, yeah. of the tree of life. You know. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Julian, because of his great stature, only lives on light. He no longer needs to eat physical food like you plebeians. (laughs) Uh, Like the the lesser humans. I can absorb the sunlight directly into my skin. Um, But in practice, that's actually a really good question. I haven't, I do, I have to say, Despite the fact that it's not in my diet, I do still love pizza. I do smash a pizza every now and again, even though it's terrible for my health. Yeah, I think that's my favorite comfort food. Fucking pizza. You have to know what what would you say is the best dream you've ever had? Um, well, that's pretty easy, I think. I mean, there's a few candidates for that. I have a lot of dreams, but um, I think the best one I've ever had is a bit long. But um, when I met my current girlfriend, I had this dream that it was also kind of when my business was starting to take off as well. So everything kind of happened at once for me. <clears throat> and I had this dream when I met her that... Um, I was like, it was so strange. I was this like Indiana Jones character, but in outer space. And I had this, I I was looking for an ancient spaceship buried under the surface of this planet. And it was in this massive cavern full of huge crystals, you know, huge, amazing quartz and amethyst and stuff. And I had this ancient very very ancient gold coin just one gold coin and this coin is what would launch the ship i would like put it in the coin slot and then the ship would take off and um 
and I was sort of hunting for this ship and I found it and put the coin in and we were like blasting off. And I remember like seeing this ship taking off inside this huge cabin full of crystals. It was incredible. And on one of the crystals was this woman who, who, who was and is my girlfriend. And um, I, I like was, I was, I think I was reaching out of the top of the spaceship, the rocket, it was like a rocket ship. And I was like telling her to, to, to grab on basically to get onto the rocket ship. And, um, and then as dreams do, like the scene just cut and we were inside the, the rocket ship and it was taking off. And, and then we'd landed in this sort of floating, um, <clears throat> it was like a floating island. And there was this on the island where we, we kind of landed here and there was like a patio going that way. And then this huge hotel, sort of 20th century style, beautiful, ornate hotel with a garden in the front and all the all the uh, rooms were lit up and there was people talking and chattering and there was music and and it was just beautiful. That was the sort of and that was basically the end of the dream. But that's the best dream I've ever had, I think. What is what is the clients that you most covet other than the real i love it no actually that's a great question this is this is advertising for me isn't it we should just uh in yours we should <clears throat> the, the guys is an interrogation but i just ask you all kinds of business questions and you just answer them. <laughs> it's just an ad um <laughs> honestly like <clears throat> it's the clients who are really committed to to what i do they really believe in what i do and there's no sort of umming and eyeing about is this real um or anything like that it's just like yep you said this and it happened and i'm like well yeah i mean i know i did and there's also yeah i've been kind of contemplating this recently but it's people who really love astrology and they're really looking for the real source. You know, they want a real deep spiritual transformation rather than just looking at your personality. And I mean, that's all well and good. And me telling you about your, um, you know, your daddy issues um, <laughs> rather than that. But, but looking at their soul as a whole and their life purpose and getting the whole thing into perspective and really giving their entire life um, a meaning, creating their story, telling their story, understanding their story. Yeah. Yep. That search for the life purpose. I think that's really what it is. What percentage of your clients are like that? A lot of them. I would say most of them are like that, actually. Most of the people I work with are like that. They're. Um, Yeah, I get a lot of different people and I don't think what is the common thread, but I know the people who I enjoy working with the most are the ones who are really looking for that deep self-knowledge, that knowledge of what their trajectory is, what they're here for, you know, why they're, why they were brought to this earth. And I would say, I think, I think most of them are 80%. Has it a guess? Eighty percent are like that, maybe more. Um, it's pretty nice. <laughs> I really want to know what surprises. What are some surprises you have about yourself recently? What what did, and what are some past surprises that you keep discovering that you didn't know about yourself? Recent surprises about myself and past surprises that I didn't know about myself that I keep Correct. discovering? Okay, that's a very deep question. That's interesting. Um, Scorpio Mercury. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. For it's sure. my Adma Kavka. Is that how you say it? You, you, you Is it? Oh, they... <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Have that's you heard great. anyone refer to it as that? Um, I think I have heard some funny names for it, actually, in the past. <laughs> It's very different. At, at, at Mokaka. 
I'm going to start calling it that when I talk to my teacher. <laughs> so the Atmaka, the Atmaka is Jupiter, and he'll be like, "What the fuck? <laughs> Did you have a stroke?" Oh no. Um. So. Yeah, well, that's a really, you know, because I think, um, like, in life, it's not a material thing that stabilizes us. You know, we have these periods in our life, some are more difficult and some are more positive, and life sort of fluff, it ebbs and flows in this very natural fashion. But I don't believe that those materially positive periods are what truly gives stability to life. I think what truly gives the stability to life is your relationship with God. <clears throat> and the oh. depth of pardon. Oh. Mm, amen. And the depth of your wisdom and your love and your understanding of that other world, that divine world. Um, and for me, <clears throat> that comes through the teachings of Omram Mikhail Ivanov, who is my master. And since I've discovered him, and I would say since I really got submerged in the teaching, in, which was in about 20, God, when was it? 21, which was in about 2022, that was when I really started to reap, reap a harvest of my, my, my efforts and my study of quite a few years. And um, I would say since then, that's when life has begun to really stabilize on the internal level. It is happening on the material level as well, but they're kind of coming together. It's really interesting. And so it is, it's a very, it's like I'm unfolding a new self, a whole new part of my, a whole new version of myself and um, getting to know it is very curious. So this is a, this is a great question and one that I may not be able to fully answer because um, it's, uh, I don't know, I don't know if I have the answers myself, but <clears throat> I think things that surprise me now is the effect that I have on people and the, the response that I get from people. You know, I'm not used to, it's funny, right? I'm not used to having a positive response from people. I'm used to pretty mundane, pretty negative, pretty, uh, I don't know, what's the word? Uh, I can't think of it right now, but, but just not positive responses from people in general. Whereas I would say, since 2022, 2021 as well, even, things have become much more positive. It's like people, I'm, it's like I'm around the right people now and they can see um, the good side of me. You know, they can appreciate what I have to offer. And um, I think that is, has just been a massive surprise. I'm like, oh, you actually appreciate what I do? You actually like this thing of, that I, you know, do all this spiritual work and stuff. It's really, that's big. And then from the past, <clears throat> that's very interesting. Because again, the teaching changes the entire way you see life and see your life. I see, sorry, I should speak in first person, the way I see my life. And um, yeah, the past me, I mean, I look at it, there's a lot of things where I'm like, oh, really? I didn't even... I didn't realize that I was like that. I didn't realize I was uh, being so self-centered in a lot of ways. I didn't realize that I was so, um, gosh. Hashtag anima. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not like a lot of the, the flaws, basically, in the way, you know, because, I, I mean, I was in a bad place, so that obviously doesn't help. And it just, um, the whole poor me story is really, is really, un for me, really uncovering that from my past and just being like, well, actually, that was all, you know, I know it was tough, 
but that was also just the way you were thinking about things. And there's a whole other way that you can think about things where you're not the victim, <laughs> where you're, it's not about you. <clears throat> and, and that's a much more pleasant way to live. And you become much less, I have become or would have been a much less, a much less angry and a much more fulfilled person, even though life was difficult. So anyway, it's a very interesting question, I think, uh, looking back at myself and just seeing all the new things in a new light, seeing all the things I've already known, but seeing them in a new light. Um, yeah, it's very deep. And that's not to say that I was a terrible person or anything, but just for my reflection, that's what I'm noticing at the moment. Is that a satisfactory answer? Very satisfactory. I also want to say Julian's effect on my life. My my channel name is literally named because of Julian helping me find the most powerful astrological influence that I had no idea about, like really how powerful it was. I had another ancient astrologer say comment on that I had Regulus on my on my moon, and then that helped me find Julian's channel. Every single time I do a reading with him, I get all positive tarot. I actually had a Kundalini awakening like about within the week after my reading. Like it is the most significant, one of the most significant spiritual influences of any of any person uh, in my life. So please book his session right now. <laughs> buy it. If you don't have money, refer a thousand people until people pay for it. Make it happen. Go subscribe, share, like, tattoo his his channel on your car tattoo it on your face you know get <laughs> just just go all out buy all of the merchandise that he's going to make in the future you know just just do everything just just sell your house and give him all the money right now immediately <laughs> because this his i i seriously tell all my friends to get his astrology because it's that monumental wow that's beautiful that's such a nice feedback i love that love that mm -hmm. it was definitely big for you that's for sure <laughs> and it's big for everybody actually it's it's a big transformation you know seeing not only seeing the chart visually with the way that i presented or that the system presents it really it's not credit doesn't go to me for that um but then having it interpreted the way that i do um it's very powerful i mean i know for my yeah, like i'm what i was yearning for when i was you know like i said when i was 15 16 and just waking up and looking at reading my chart and just like oh this is this kind of makes sense but it's not you know i, I wasn't satisfied it didn't give me what i was looking for which was a sense of purpose it was a <clears throat> confirmation of the intuition that i already felt in my chest about what i was here to do and um the astrology wasn't giving me that. So if I had found somebody who could say, oh, yeah, your destiny is to be a very famous astrologer and to, you know, um, bring about an incredible, um, to share this incredibly ancient hidden knowledge of astrology that nobody else knows, I would have been like, that would have absolutely transformed my life and transformed my look, my outlook, my life. Yeah, it would have been very powerful. I really, I really want to know about, as a child, what did you think about God or spirituality or all of that? Did you have, had you not thought about it or, or what did you conceptualize or how did you deal with those issues earlier? Yeah, that is such an interesting question. I remember when I was like three or two or something, I came, yeah, probably it must have been three. And um, my mom was bringing me home from the little kindergarten or whatever it was. I don't know what it was. And uh, there were these, I can't remember, they must have been Caribbean or some black ladies basically there. And it was, this was in London. And they were telling me, I don't know what they were telling me, but they were for some reason talking about God, right? As the sort of traditional, <laughs> as they would. 
and I was asking my mom, you know, who is God? Who's this God guy? And uh, and her answer was, oh, he's so uh, he's this old man who sits who's up in the clouds, and sometimes people think that they can see him up there. And I remember it's so interesting. And I remember looking up at the clouds and just being filled with this uh, this like wonder of like, can I see him up there? You know, it was so interesting for a three year old. Um, but other than that, you know, as I got older, I didn't have my my dad has been a Buddhist pretty much his entire life. Um, I didn't even really know about that until I was like 18, maybe, yeah, 18. And, and I'm, you know how dads are, right? I'm still like discovering more about him, you know, he's not very good at sharing. Um, but um, so I didn't really have any spiritual nothing when I was growing up, you know, it wasn't, there wasn't a huge amount of that. So I was you know, if you if you had asked me when I was, you know, I mean, obviously, what does a kid know about this? But, you know, when I was growing up before the age of, when did I have that shift? Probably before the age of 16, if you would ask me, or even 15, I would have said, you know, you know, God's not real. I don't believe in God. And that's the whole brainwashing thing, right? You just say it because that's what everybody else believes when you're in school <clears throat> or in an academic environment generally. And then, but then after, you know, after I had that whole awakening experience, um, it, it was one and done. I I remember my first sort of big revelations was actually reading Rumi. I don't know how, um, but yeah, I was just reading Rumi. I don't know how I came across it. And yeah, that it was this huge, the poetry you know, was so alive and the spirituality inside the poetry really spoke to me. <clears throat> So, um, and from that point on, it was like, well, yeah, of course God exists. You know, are you stupid? <laughs> um, but yeah, that, that's where I came from because my mom mm -hmm. is a doctor and her grandparents were academics. And, you know, they have absolutely no spirit. Well, not no spiritual, event, but very limited spirit. My mom obviously is different, but my grandparents have no real spiritual had not much of a spiritual life so that's what I knew you know that's really all I knew and then of course school and friends and blah 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 and they're all just robots basically so it was all the brainwashing but yeah that's pretty much the story with my relationship to spirituality now here I am um <laughs> <clears throat> Also, everyone, comment below what you think about Julian. All positive, oh, all comments. Yeah, comment all negative. Tons. <laughs> I think what everyone is dying to know, everyone's, you know, obsessed with Julian. They have to know, in <laughs> Harry Potter house are you? <laughs> I have no idea. I, well, I don't know them that well, but I would probably be a Gryffindor. What do you I think? think so I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna, I'm gonna no, phone a friend. Definitely. You, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, probably. <clears throat> yeah. The roaring lion. Let's what would you be? I, when would I be? Uh, same, I think. Yeah, really? Okay. I think so. Yep. Yep. I don't really know them very well, so I can't comment, but. I love that. I mean, we both have the lion heart, so we should be. <clears throat> I, I also want to know what is the most hair, uh, the most skin goose peppering <laughs> and, and hair twinkling, chilling experience you've ever had? The most spiritual, like shocking experience you've ever had? It's really interesting. <clears throat> it's 11 11 on my clock right now. Hold on a second. That's my that's my synchronicity number that I see. Mm -hmm. a yep. lot. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the club. So <clears throat> hmm. that's actually a really interesting question. I mean, I have lots of them. I don't know if I could. There's just it's Light such a dark. yeah it's such a normal thing for me that well okay this is interesting 
this is an interesting one, actually. Um, there's a kind of a couple in the same vein, but <clears throat> I was actually thinking about this the other night too. My, this was so weird. So when I was finishing high school, when I finished high school, just after I finished high school, uh, my family, we like, we went on a little day trip to the beach and I was in an absolute state. It was, I was at the lowest point that I've ever been at. It was really, really horrible. And, um, and uh, yeah, we were just at the beach and I had taken this book with me called, gosh, what was its name? It was something like, um, past, I think it was past life therapy or past life regression therapy or something like that. <clears throat> it was a book about past lives, basically. <clears throat> and I was sitting with my mom on the grass while everybody else was in the water and on the beach and stuff. There's this little grass bit before the sand. <clears throat> and I was sitting with my mom on the grass and I went to go get changed to put my swimming gear on. And I left my mom with the book and she sat there with the book. And then when I came back, this was like three minutes later or something, I came back and there was this woman sitting with her. Was, what the hell is this old lady? And I said, this is so weird. <clears throat> and I went and I, I sat next to them and, you know, we had a little chat and she had been seen the book. This lady had seen the book and come over to talk to my mom about it. And um, and I could tell that she had all this. And it, sorry, my throat. Um, she had all this energetic stuff going on. I need to drink my my medicine, actually. I made myself a little burdock root infusion. <clears throat> Let's see if this will act uh, immediately. <laughs> It tastes really good, but awkward. <clears throat> so, and and yes, yeah, so she came over because of this book, and she and my mum were just talking, and I could see because I had all this all the instabilities of an early spiritual awakening. I had that going on, and so I could kind of I kind of could see that all her chakras were like really open and glowing, and so she had something going on, and. Um, and we were talking and whatever. And then eventually, I can't remember how it came up, but all I really remember from that interaction that's really stayed with me was she, um, eventually we just sort of, we, I can't remember how it came up, but she looked at me and she goes, you're a gift. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know. I mean, I was like, yeah, I think I am, but. I don't know anymore. You know, I feel pretty crap about myself. <clears throat> but yeah, she goes, you're a gift. And it turns out that she, I can't remember her name, but she's she's a, a relatively well-known psychic in, obviously, in Australia. And she, um, she I think she has like several books um, about, mediumship and and she channels these different beings <clears throat> which is all really interesting i need to look her up again but i think just for me at that time in my life when i was at that low you know it was literally it was like this angel reaching down was like look everything's shit right now but actually it's worth it it'll be worth it <clears throat> and just the fact that she just came out of nowhere you know she like just appeared and said this thing and then left. It was like, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think I, from memory, that's what she said. You are a gift or, or you are a gift from beyond something like that. Yeah, it was really magical. Very powerful experience. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All all the all god's children for tuning in and watching the channel yeah subscribe to julian's at olympia astrology and, and watch all his Colin. videos and like all of his videos and <laughs> sit through all of them and subscribe to his instagram at olympus mm. astrology and book a session right now <laughs> right now immediately i want uh, i want good. julian's channel i want him to be overwhelmed with how many clients he has so yeah, and definitely refer Colin. 
<laughs> yes. Say that Rick yep. Holland referred you and you'll get a little discount. So. Absolutely. 100% exactly right. Send me a message with that and uh, maybe we'll do like a coupon code, Colin. Oh, Lugal. The code will be Lugal. Exactly. Oh, I love that. That's so good. <laughs> cool. And yeah, and for everybody watching this on my channel, go and look at, watch my man, Lugal. L-U-G-A-L. That's the ancient name of Regulus. Go and check out his stuff. He's got some pretty powerful um, abilities going on there. So maybe we can look at your chart in the next video and, and share your story through the chart. How about that? He's so much fun. Yeah, be sweet. That's so cool. Julian, would you would you speak a blessing over my over our viewers? Amen. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let me think. Hmm. Ah, just the thing. Let's see. So. Formulas and prayers, consecration, page 219. <clears throat> this is the book, A New Earth, from the teacher Omram Mikhail Agamemnon. And here it has a list of prayers and powerful formulas that we can use. And this is a formula of consecration. So let me see. Do I have some incense around the place? I believe I do. Hold on one second. I want to do this properly. Be right back. I need to get it from another room. Oh, and I didn't have a lighter. But getting lots of obstacles in the way of this. Do you have incense? Maybe you could burn some incense. Oh, I'm I'm moving today, so I, I pack them all up, unfortunately. Yeah, all good. Going, can I recommend some incense to you to buy? All right, I found it. We're cooking. Julian, can I can I recommend some incense for you to try? Yeah, please. I'm not affiliated with them in any way, but you go on Etsy and you type in like the biblical, the biblical formula recipe and everything. It's not like the exact one in the scripture, but it is the most unbelievably powerful incense I've ever smelled in my entire life. And there's mm -hmm. this guy that has all these weird like Onaicha or whatever it's pronounced, like all these really obscure like amazing, like alchemical and um, really, I think I think it'd be your your shindig. All right. OK, cool. We'll have to, I'll have to check that out. That sounds great. Beautiful. All right. Well, I will burn this incense. By the boundless omnipotence of the sacred name of God. And by the omnipotence of the divine mother and of the magic word. May all impure and malicious entities be banished from this group, from these people. I consecrate this pe these people to you, O Lord, our Father, divine mother, O Christ and Holy Spirit for your honor and your glory and for light that may and may hostile forces never take possession of it. Amen. So be it. <laughs> um, Beautiful. God bless. 
God bless. I think I think our our viewers will feel that, and I think that they will really experience the positivity that you bring to every single reading. Mm-hmm. And so, in your book of reading, you get Julian's blessing, and it is <laughs> well. So that's another reason to book with Julian. So. <laughs> Oh, I love it. You're so good at this. You're so blessed. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Beautiful. Well, we can um, stop the recording there, right? And then I'll chop that up. Not that there's much.